So when we look at capacity, how do we know how well are we utilizing the capacity that we have? And in utilizing that capacity, how efficient are we in using the amount that we're using? Glad you asked. So in this video, I will talk about design and effective capacity, as well as some capacity metrics, capacity utilization, as well as efficiency rate. So first, let's define a few things. We're going to look at capacity from a different aspect, metaphorically. We know design capacity is the maximum amount achievable. This is the amount of capacity that is your system or process is designed to achieve. Let's say we took this glass. Um, it is designed to hold, let's say, 12 ounces of liquid. That is the design capacity for this glass, to hold 12 ounces of liquid. However, if I only pour eight ounces into the glass, that would be the actual output. That is how much I'm actually using. I'm not at design capacity. And then we have something else called effective capacity. Your effective capacity is the maximum amount that you can produce under a given set of circumstances. Now that can be from a manufacturing sense, uh, the number of employees you have, downtime of production, any equipment changeovers that have to take place, uh, the products that you produce. All of these could affect how well you can produce based on the design capacity, right? So using this example metaphorically, uh, let's just say because of my conditions with kids in the house and things like that, if I want to fix a glass of water, my effective capacity is probably around 9, 10 ounces. One, if I fill it to the top 12 ounces and try to take a walk and sit down, I'm going to spill it, right? And that's going to be downtime of cleaning up. So why keep filling it to the design capacity if I know it's going to cause a problem? So my actual output could be lower than, let's say, 9 or 10, or my effective capacity is going to be my sweet spot, right? It's that place where I'm confident I can feel or utilize my design capacity without causing any problems. So designed to do 12 ounces, my actual output can be anything less than that. My effective capacity can be anything less than that. However, when it comes to being effective, that sweet spot that organizations produce is usually where they want to be. And that can be eight, nine, or 10 ounces. But one thing we can see here is that effective capacity can never exceed design capacity. This glass is designed to hold 12 ounces of liquid, nothing beyond that. So you cannot produce beyond the capacity that you have to produce. Okay, so now, Let's look at some ways that we can determine what the design or effective capacity is and calculate uh, capacity utilization as well as efficiency rate. So, hey, we're productions. Yes, I'm producing products now. <laughs> this is my facility. And inside this facility, we have three conveyor belts for one for each department, department A, department B and department C. And in each department, we have four employees. And on average, we produce 2,775 units per day. Now, on an eight hour workday, each department can produce 100 units every 30 minutes. What is the design capacity? So, with this example, the first thing we want to consider is what information is relevant to the question. Determining the design capacity, how much we produce on average is irrelevant to the design capacity because remember, design capacity is the maximum amount achievable on a perfect day, given perfect circumstances. So we're simply looking at the eight hour workday producing 100 units every 30 minutes. So if we're producing 100 units every 30 minutes, that basically says we can produce 200 units per hour. This makes the math a little bit easier for you to do. So if you know that you're doing 200 units per hour 
over an eight-hour workday, you simply have to multiply 200 times 8. And that's going to give you 1,600 units. But remember, we have three departments, and each of these departments are producing 1,600 units, so we have to multiply that by 3. That gives us a total of 4,800. So in this case, our design capacity is 4,800 units. Now, let's throw a little something in the mix here. Remember, effective capacity is the maximum amount achievable under a given set of circumstances. You know, we don't live in a perfect world. So even though we, we're designed to produce 4,800, how often will that happen? Probably never. So let's add some situational variables here. Let's say on Fridays, one employee in each department take off for vacation. Also on Fridays, machines have to be oiled for one hour. What is the effective capacity? Now remember when we're talking about effective capacity, this is about the maximum amount that we can do under a given set of circumstances. So let's do the math. Now in this scenario, because you lost 25% of your employees, you had four, one is taken off in each department, so now you only have three. So you're at 75% staffed instead of 100% staffed. And the assumption we would make here is that because we had a decrease in employees by 25%, we're going to have to decrease the number of units we produce by 25%. So we go back to the data, and we look at the eight hour workday, 100 units every 30 minutes. But right now, we're not doing 100 units, right? We're doing 25% less. So for the sake of doing math, we take 100 and we multiply by 25%. And we know that that's 25. So when we take that 25 away from 100, we know that we produce 75 units every 30 minutes instead of the 100 units. And again, to make the math easier, we know that 30 and 30 makes an hour. So 75 plus 75, we know is 150. So we're doing a total of 150 units an hour right now. And we do the same math. We have 150 units that we're doing an hour. We're working an eight hour workday. And we see that we're doing 1,200 units opposed to the 1,600 units for each belt. But again, we have three departments. We have to multiply this 1,200 by three. That gives us 3,600. So right now, our effective capacity is 3,600. However, there's still some details in the scenario that we have to consider. Machines have to be oiled for one hour on Friday. So each department has one machine and each machine will basically be down for an hour, which means we cannot produce any units during that hour. So what we have to do here is consider that hour by taking away the number of units we would have produced during that hour. So going back to the math, we're not doing 200 units an hour, right? We're doing 150. So basically, we need to deduct 150 for every machine that was oiled because we will not produce those units. Now, the long way, of course, is to subtract 150 three times in a row, right? I do this sometimes just to make sure that I'm doing my math the right way. But you subtract the 150 three times to make sure that you have accounted for the machines being oiled and the products that would have been produced during that time. That brings your effective capacity down to 3150. So your design capacity in this situation is 4800. Your effective capacity is 3150. Now, let's jump to capacity utilization and efficiency rate. When we look at capacity utilization, remember, the formula for capacity utilization is actual output divided by 
design capacity. So in this case, the output is given. 2,775, that is the average output. So we're going to use that as our actual output. So real simple calculation, we take the actual output, we put that in our calculator first, and we're gonna divide by the design capacity of 4,800, and we see that our capacity utilization is 0.5781, but when we round that and turn it into a percentage, it becomes 57.81%. And we can just simply multiply by 100 to get that, and we're at 57.81%. And that is our utilization rate or capacity utilization. So we're utilizing roughly 58% of our total capacity of 4,800. Means we still got some bandwidth, so this is not a bad thing because at some point in the season, it may be necessary to increase capacity. And the good thing is we would have the bandwidth to do so. So you don't want to be uh, too low with capacity utilization because again, if you're overhead cost and, and you're paying for this, you wanna be producing enough units to make money. Uh, however, you also wanna make sure you have enough room. But if you go to an eight, a 12 hour workday because you have an increase in demand, you want to be able to make those adjustments without having to uh, take drastic measures like uh, expand your factory you know, through construction. You don't want to have to do that. You want to have some capacity bandwidth just in case. Now, let's look at the efficiency rate. So going back to the formulas, good thing is actual output is in both of these formulas. And actual output will always go first in both of these formulas. So for efficiency rate, your actual output, 2,775, divided by our effective capacity, which is 3,150. And in this case, we're looking at 88%. So that is not bad at all. This is basically saying, based on the amount of capacity that we are using, we are very, very, very efficient in using that capacity. So this number, you do want to be high. Now, if this number was low, this was basically say that not only are you, your design capacity is only at about 57%, but you're not utilizing or you're not being efficient in utilizing that capacity. So this is a good number to have if you're efficiency rate is at 88%. Now, when it comes to remembering the formulas, I think about these alphabetically, right? If I'm asked a question, capacity utilization. Now, in some instances, you may be asked, what is the utilization rate? And that kind of throws this off a little bit. But if you get a question and they ask you for capacity utilization, that letter C pops up, right? Capacity utilization. I know alphabetically the letter D follows C. So I know I'm going to use my design capacity and not my effective capacity, right? The good thing too is with both of these formulas, you're using the actual output. And again, alphabetically, I think the letter A comes before anything in the alphabet. So my actual output always go into my calculator first. So I think capacity utilization, the formula must be actual output divided by D follow C, design capacity. And when it comes to the efficiency rate, same aha moment takes place, right? The letter E, okay, E efficiency, I'm going to use my effective capacity and not my design capacity. And again, going back alphabetically, the letter A comes before anything in the alphabet. So efficiency rate, actual output divided by effective capacity. My actual output will always go into my calculator first. So key takeaways, design and effective capacity. Design capacity is the maximum amount you can do based on how your system or process is designed. Your effective capacity is the maximum amount that you can do 
based on a given set of circumstances. You know, the downtime of equipment, number of employees, the changing of equipment that has to take place, the products that you have to produce. And then remember these capacity metrics, capacity utilization is determined how much of your capacity that you're actually using. And then the efficiency rate is determining how effective you are in using that capacity based on your actual output.